Okay, guys, good evening. <laughs> okay, guys, good evening. Okay, we're going to start in um, one minute's time. Um, so before I start, um, as usual, for those people that have come to my training on a regular basis, you know me. Okay, I'm not a racist. I'm not a biased guy. <laughs> I'm not a sexist guy. I'm not a prejudiced guy. Okay. Uh, so you know me. All right. Okay, good. So for those people who doesn't know me, please, if you like me, I'm happy for you. If you don't like me, please do not go to my Facebook account and say that, you know, put hate mail there. Understand? Hate comments there. All right. So we're just going to wait for a while uh, because I know internet is slow in some parts of the world. So let's wait for another one more minute uh, before we start. So you know the topic of the day, right? The topic of the day is called the thought process of the customer. Okay, the thought process of the customer. Okay, so we're going to start in a minute's time. So let's hope uh, we will have a good day. So obviously today is a Saturday, right? So in Singapore time, it's 5 p.m. So if you're not out eating somewhere, that means you're single. <laughs> so it's okay, all right? Not to have a boyfriend or girlfriend, all right? So you'll spend your Saturday so-called evenings with me, all right? So let's start, huh? Hmm. Okay, the thought process of a customer. Ah, now, um, there are three components in this meeting. Now, I am a good sales presenter. I swear, if any one of you have an opportunity to see me do a presentation, a real presentation, huh? regardless whether it's to a government officer or CEO, or customers just like you, your jaw will drop on the floor like that. Okay. Now, not because I'm a good salesman. <laughs> Please do not think that, you know, like I know a lot of you will start to have this crazy thinking, oh, but salespeople are cunning little shits. You know, they are very cunning little people. That's not true. That's not because the sales profession is an honorable profession. Without salespeople today, all of us will have no jobs. Do you understand? Without salespeople today, all of you will be broke because there will be no job creation. Understand? So it's not. It's the character behind the salesperson that is more important. Okay? So I want you to understand this. Huh? So I just going to share you a story yesterday. And this is a true story. Huh? Yesterday, I was at my warehouse in the morning. Okay, because I have a warehouse in Singapore. Uh, we have a lot of furniture there. So I was, you know, because I have three staff that is out of action now. One fractured her arm. One's in Thailand. The other person, um, the mother, um, got cancer. So she went back to Malaysia to take care of the mom for a while. So in our Singapore head office, we are shortage of um, so-called operation people. So I have to cover some of the duties of my staff that is not around. So I was wearing shorts and slippers. You know, slippers, this is the exact same slipper that I wore yesterday. Really, yeah. Exact, exact slipper, all right? So I remember um, one of my clients called up saying that, hey, Mr. Ma, I would like to see you in the afternoon today. Is it possible? Uh, because I need, uh, need some workers because one of our business is a recruitment agency. It's called Empire Global Recruitment and we provide Malaysian workers for them. Okay, only Malaysians uh, because of the, they have a special permit that they can work in our country. So I said, okay, since I'm going back to the office, so I told the client, hey, I work really hard in the morning. Right? I'm wearing shorts and slippers. So please bear with me. So I didn't change, I didn't redress. So I went to the meeting. So it's a restaurant called Black Pearl Steak. Okay, the revenue for these two restaurants combined together is about $3 million every year. So it's a quite a, quite a 
nice restaurant, okay restaurant, things like that. So, so I managed to close the deal. Okay, and the deal is $65,000 in business development plans for one of our projects called Singapore Resource Support Center with a pair of shorts, slippers, without bringing my name cards and a few pieces of paper and a pen. Yeah, Mr. Chong, that's what I did. Okay, okay, that's what I did. And it's a, this is a true story. My staff knows that I'm a good presenter. And, and the reason why I can close deals is because I understand the thought process of the customer. I don't care whether he likes me or not. I don't care whether he wants this product or not because I know he wants the product. If he doesn't want the product, he will not call me. Right? True, if he doesn't want the product, why the hell would he call me? He wouldn't call me if he doesn't want the product at all. So I decided to go down and I managed to close this deal. Now, before you want to do this, before you understand the thought process of the customer, there are a few things that you need to do. The first thing is you must learn to love people. Okay? Learning to love people is important. But because you guys are millennials, most of them, not, not all of you, love people. Huh? Because most of you are millennials, and millennials are pretentious. They don't know how to talk. Yes, you don't know how to talk. Half of you are shy. Half of you are into glamour. You know, glamour, you know what's glamour? You want to look good. You want to look good in front of customers. You want to use style over substance. You know what style over substance? Like, you know, a lot of young women we have here, whether you're from Central Asia or from the Philippines or from Vietnam, man, today young women are great in Instagram photos. Oh, shit. They are really, really magic at Instagram photos. Man, they don't look the same people when you, when, when you, when you look at a real guy. Hey, why you look so different? This is how great they are at Instagram photos. You see, because we live in the world, in the world of style over substance. Okay, that is not good. You understand? That is not good especially you are starting out. So understanding the process, the thought process of the customer, the first thing you need to do is that you must learn to love the people. Now, I love all people. I don't care. Seriously, this is me. I do not give a shit whether you are from Africa, India, Vietnam, Malaysia, fat, ugly, pretty, handsome, you know, tall, short. I really, really, really don't care. Man, I have money to hire the prettiest people in the world. I do. I really do, I swear. But I hire Akmala. Akmala, wave to everybody. Uh, he's one of the ugliest Indians that ever exists in India. <laughs> I no, seriously, I have money. Really, I have. I can hire the prettiest people in the world. Really, I do. You understand? But there you go. So in, if you want to do sales or if you want to do business, you must learn to love people. Okay, this is very, very important. To me, sales is an art. It's not selling a stupid product. Oh, I need to have the best product in the world or I need to have the best service in the world. To me, that's, that's business development. These are two different things. Sales is a process. It's a process. It's like a journey. It's like drawing a picture, telling a story. It's artistic. You know, it's passion. It's a lot of things. So you must learn to love people. You know, unfortunately, we live in a racist society, a biased society, a prejudiced society where some people look at ugly people, they will think that I don't want to sell him, 
right? Some people look at people that dress really, really well and they thought that these are the best buyers. Bullshit. Usually, the ugliest undressed businessmen in the world are the best buyers in the world. Not the guys with the suit and tie. I'll be honest with you. Okay? So I want everybody to understand this. If you don't like people, which most of you don't. <laughs> okay, it's true. Most of you don't like people. Come on, don't lie to me. I know most of you don't like people. If you don't like people, it will never work. Even you have the best product in the world or the best merchandise in the world or the best service in the world, it will not work. So number one, Love the people. And when you deal with people, there shouldn't be any prejudice. There shouldn't be any hatred. It doesn't matter where they are from. You know, you know there's only one type of person I really, really hate in my life. Just one. Lazy people. Oh, God, I fucking hate lazy people. Man, if you're, gonna, if you're lazy, you're going to work for me. Oh, I swear to God, I'll hammer you to the fucking ground. Yeah. I don't care, you know, I have a lot of beautiful staff working for me, pretty girls, handsome guys, you know, pretty girls and handsome guys, sometimes they will act cute in front of me. I'm pretty, I don't have to work. You're wrong. If you're pretty, I'm going to treat you like how I treat the ugly people. You understand what I'm saying? So, so you cannot be biased towards people. This is very, very important. Okay, if you want, you want to understand what customers are about. So that's number one. Love the people. Number two, sales come from two points. The first point is inbound. The second point is outbound. Inbound, outbound. Okay, what do I mean by this? Hey, remember, uh, this is all I create myself. Uh, you cannot find anything in the textbooks. Uh, so please don't go and get a PhD textbook and try to figure out. Okay, inbound means customers call you okay for example if you have a laundromat and maybe miss ma janet somera call miss su tadong thing i want to wash clothes at your laundromat okay that is called inbound outbound means you have to search for customers you know so you, you try to convince miss ma janet hey please come to my laundromat for washing all right, so let's talk about these two things first. Let's talk about inbound first. Now, inbound customers, when they call you, when they call you, means they are interested. Okay, let me explain to you. Uh, there's a difference. Uh. When they call you, means they are interested. But most of you don't think like that. Most of you will start to think, Oh, they're just asking for fun. They just want to compare price. Or oh, they want to ask here, ask that, right? Yes or no? That's how you feel, right? Every single time when a customer, if you cannot close a deal, you start to blame the customer. You start to blame the people. You start to blame society. You start to blame the government. <laughs> you start to blame your mother. You start to blame your cat. You know, it's a blaming game. Okay, let me explain to you. Inbound customers, when they call you, when they call you, when they call you, means they are interested. Okay? So it doesn't matter which industry you are from, as long as a customer call you, he's interested. But you fuck it up. You know why you fuck it up? Because you're a shit presenter. So he's, he's like 100%, I want to buy. After talking to you, it dropped to 90%. After hear you for another 10 more minutes, drop to 80%. After hear you for another five more minutes, 50%. After 50%, 25%, 10%, or thank you very much. Uh, I don't think this product serve is, is suitable for me. Okay, let me explain to you why I'm right. Now, all of you buy stuff, right? True? Miss Bu Bui Huyen, oh, you, nice, you have a nice haircut today, huh? <laughs> okay, so Miss Huyen, you buy stuff, right? 
yeah, you buy stuff, right? You go shopping, you go to you go to buy CDs. I no, no, not CDs. CDs my generation. Sorry. <laughs> CDs are for old people like me. <laughs> you buy uh, um, iPhones, you know, things like that, right? Dresses, clothes, and everything, right? Every time when someone goes to a shop, you didn't go there because you don't want to buy. You go there is because you want to buy. But the problem is whether you have the money or don't have the money to buy. Do you understand? Aishan will not go to 1,000 shops like Disneyland, go to every single shop, hang around at every single shop and come out just like that. Oh, my job is to make fun of the shop owners today. No. Okay, Aishan didn't go to the buy anything in the shop. It's because she met with lousy salespeople, lousy products, lousy this, and then she walked out. Just like some of you, when you call inquiry on the phone, inquiry on the phone, that, that means you call for something, 100% you have interest on that product. The reason why you didn't continue with the product is because the person that talked to you do not know how to engage with you. You understand? But maybe Mr. Ding has no money for a Mercedes. Okay, maybe you don't have money for a Mercedes, huh? but you still go to a Mercedes shop. That means your interest is Mercedes car is there. It's there. It's just that maybe you don't have the money, right? So, but the interest is there. So the key is how to keep Mr. Ding's interest until one beautiful day, he will have the money to come for the Mercedes. I have never met any people in the world that would just call for the sake of calling if he has no interest or go into a shop, you know, and then you have no interest. The interest is always there. It's just that whether you can afford it, cannot afford it, whether you like the product or you like, you ask Miss Chaudu Tariku. Miss Tariku will not go to all the clothing shop in, I don't know which country you're from, so I presume it could be India. You will not go to all the shops in India and just hang around and then walk out just like that. When you try the earrings, when you try the earrings, means your interest is there. Right? Even sometimes when you go to restaurants, you look at the menu, your interest is there. You want to eat in that restaurant. But why you didn't eat? So that's called the thought process of the customer. Like nobody will do stupid things. Mr. Lorenzo, if he has no interest in Louis Vuitton bag, he will not go into a Louis Vuitton shop. Right, Mr. Lorenzo? That's for sure, right? Right, you understand? So always remember this, use a reverse way when you gauge with customers. I will not go to a Nike shop if I have no interest in buying Nike shoes. Okay? It's either whether I have the budget or I don't have the budget for it. That's it. Always remember that, huh? So you, every customer that you see today, you must take ownership. Take ownership that if the customer walk away from you, it's your fault. How many, go, how many of you go property searching every day? Who has this habit? Who has this habit to go search for properties every day, trick the consultant and then don't buy and then walk off just like that? Correct. You will not do that. You will not even look for properties. You see? So when a property, when a property buyer call you, means he has interest. He has interest. If you cannot close the deal, it's because you queue off the deal. Like just like yesterday, I come back to the appointment yesterday. This is an absolutely true story. Yeah? 
So I have a colleague called Benson Toh and I have a colleague called Coco. It's their appointment. So I just went there, talked to the customers. Initially, the customer did not want our service after talking to my two staff. So I told my two staff, hey, shut up, shut up. Let me talk, let me talk. So when I talk, not only the customer agree with me, the customer made this statement. They said that I'm like a, an angel from heaven that come here to save her. This is her exact statement. So you know, it's not the customer's problem. Stop pushing the blame to the customers. Okay, I want everybody to understand this. Huh? Take ownership. Stop pushing the blame to the customers. It's you. If they don't buy from you, it's because you are dumbass. Okay? You understand? Just like everybody. Can you imagine if anyone wants to sell things to me? Can you imagine that? What am I thinking now? Do you know? So if you do not know what I'm thinking, how are you going to sell me? Just like everybody here wants a good job, right? Who doesn't want a good job? Put up a hand. Who wants, everybody wants a good job? Everybody wants a good job, right? So if, if I have an offering now, hey, I pay you $2,000 a month, will you apply for it? Of course, you will apply for it, right? But then, how the hell are you going to convince me to pay you $2,000 a month if you do not know me? Now you understand. So I want everybody to understand this. If you want to do business or you want to do sales or you want to earn millions and millions of dollars or thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars because only sales can do that. Only sales position can give you thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Okay? You understand, everybody? So you must take ownership first. You, you, you must be like me. And this is how I feel every day. I swear, this is how I feel every day, even at my level. If a customer does not, doesn't want anything from me, I'm the dumbass. You must be like me. Mr. Henry, do you understand? You must be like me. I am the dumb ass. Okay, even there are times that I cannot close deals. I look back at the way I presented. Then I say, oh shit, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you know, I'm not perfect. There will, there will be there are times that I cannot close deals, right? Right. And then I, 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 look at, I look at the mirror. Oh, shit, man. I should have done that. I'm a dumbass. So all top salespeople, all top business people, they take the ownership. You understand? They take the ownership. A real man will not blame people. He will take the ownership. Because you are simply not good enough to close it. A person that wants to buy properties, he wants to buy properties. A person that wants to take up a university program, he wants to take a university program. A person that a lot of girls like to go to shopping malls to do clothing shopping, right? You want to buy stuff. You see? So ultimately, take ownership of the customers. So inbound people means they have high interest. You are the one that destroy the interest. <laughs> okay? Good example, huh? Chong Ming. I know Chong Ming is selling water dispensers now. So Chong Ming, let's imagine this. You are the one that's selling the water dispenser. I'm the one that's selling the water dispenser. Who would you buy from? Would you buy from yourself or buy from me? <laughs> Point your finger. This or this? 
Correct. You buy, you are the one that's selling the water dispenser and you will not buy from yourself, but you will buy from me. So you know it's not the water dispenser problem. All right? It's not the water dispenser problem. If someone else can do it, means you can do it. So when it comes to sales and business, and this is very important, this is for those people that doubt himself, like maybe Tashi Jemso, he doubt himself, or maybe Marjorie, you doubt yourself, right? Nasser, Nasser, you doubt yourself. Always remember this. Huh? If similar products can be sold, Yours can too. Now, what do I mean by this? If you're selling t-shirt, t-shirt, okay, at 10 bucks per t-shirt, other people also selling 10 bucks per t-shirt. But your sales is shit, their sales is good. That means the problem is you. <laughs> if Mona Lee Mabon is selling cars. Michelle La Ma Ming also selling cars. Mona Lee car sales is shit. Michelle sales is good. Problem is Mona Lee, not the car. Okay, so let me give you hope. I call it hope. Huh? It's okay to be shit. It's okay because you can improve. <laughs> You understand? I want everybody to understand this. Uh, it's okay to be shit. Don't, don't think that being shit is a bad thing, Tashi. You understand? Jemso, you understand? Don't think. I know some of you guys will start to think, oh, what happened if I'm shit? You know, oh, it's so embarrassing. I need to die. Everybody's going to laugh at me. Oh, I, my family will laugh at me. My friends will laugh at me. No. It's okay to be shit. Because all of us are born through shit. When you were a baby, you shit all over the place, right? You understand? It's as you grow older, you know how to clean your ass better. Now you get it? So Tashi, don't worry about how you feel and don't worry about how other people feel. So the key thing is if someone else can do it, means you can do it. So you must have the belief. This is very, very important. Okay? Belief. All right. Now, when it comes to sales and customer process, okay, there's two words. Details versus emotions. Okay, details versus emotion. Okay, this is important. Okay, now, why do you think people respect me? Why? Think carefully, yeah? Or is it because I'm the CEO of a company? Come on, no. There's a lot of bosses you know in the world that you don't like, right? True? So it's not, not the position. Is it because I'm from Singapore? Nah, it's not. There's a lot of stupid Singaporeans as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's not that it's not that your country has stupid people. My country has a lot of stupid people as well. So it's not that. It's because of two things. Number one, details. Details are important. You must know your shit. Okay. Because when you go to a business transaction and the business meeting, your Knowledge has to be stronger than the customers. Some of the reasons why you cannot close deals is because your customers have more knowledge than you. Like me, when it comes to my work, I, I kick ass. <laughs> Again, if you guys are fortunate to see me in presentation, Man, your, your jaw will drop. Really drop. I can close, I can close hundred thousand dollars deal without even a PowerPoint slide. Okay, your jaw will drop. Okay, let me explain to you why details are important. You have 
to understand this. You represent your product. You represent your company. You represent your business. How can you get someone to buy a $100,000 product if you have no fucking clue what your product is about? Like some of you sell fashion, right? Some of you are selling clothes. Same thing. How can you sell clothes if you are not fashionable? Some of you sell food. How can you sell food when you don't have food passion? You see? This, this is something people don't understand. There are three types of customers in the world. The first type, super smart. Super smart customer. Second type, uh, easygoing customer. Okay, like me, I'm an easygoing customer. If I buy things from you, it's not because I need it. <laughs> it's because I sympathize you and then I'll buy from you, okay? If the things is cheap, I'll just, all right, just give me five, you know? I'm that kind of person, huh? So easygoing, and then the, the most dangerous customer, the dumb asses. Oh, so let me explain to you these three types of customers, huh? So that you understand. Smart people, easygoing people, dumb asses, customers. Okay, so again, smart people and dumb asses are the same. They are the hardest people to handle. So let's talk about easygoing people. Now, easygoing people, you can close. I always believe what you can sell is what level you are at. Okay, what, what do I mean by this? For example, Akmala. Akmala is a terrible, terrible salesperson. Wave, wave to everyone, Akmala. So that everybody, he's terrible. Man, he only can sell people, sell to people that have lesser intelligence than him. <laughs> okay? Now, I want, you, I want you to listen carefully to the next sentence. You only can sell to people that have lesser intelligence than you. Okay, think carefully, yeah? Think carefully this statement now. So you deal with a lot of people, right? When was the last time you closed deals? I mean, you still, you will have, but it's going to be very little to customers that are smarter than you. When was the last time? In any industry, in any points of life, in any businesses in the world, we will always meet people more intelligent than us. Okay, even in my industry, I met people smarter than me as well. So obviously, if your details are not strong, how in the world can you close smarter people? You only can close people below your level. Why I make the most money here, and I truly believe that I, I'm sorry, this is not an arrogant statement, uh, please uh, don't get angry, okay? Uh, who, who, this Husha, please do not put hate comments on my Facebook. <laughs> okay, this is not an arrogant statement. I truly believe that I am the most successful person here. I am. Okay, I repeat, this is not a prejudice, you know, bias remark. I know I am. You know why? Because I can close all of you. Okay, why I, okay, now I can close all of you is not because I can speak 
better than any one of you, or I'm smarter than any one of you, or maybe even talented than any one of you. I can close better than you because I know my details better than any one of you. So what are my industry? My industry is training. I train people better than where he is today. So if you're selling t-shirts, t-shirts or, 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 or laptops or food or, or I don't know, haircuts, you know, whatever, headphones, you know, jewelry, you must know all the details. If you sell diamonds, you must know everything about diamonds. If you sell headphones, because headphones, why, why would I want to pay a $500 headphone? Right, you know, like some headphones are expensive, right? Beats, Marshall, you know, those headphones are really, really expensive, right? So I can buy the same headphone at Daiso for two bucks. Why would I want to buy a Beats headphone for $170? You see, that's where the details comes in. Detailing is fighting the intelligence of the customers. When a customer wants to buy a Louis Vuitton bag, that means he's not poor. Understand? He's not poor. Okay? He's not poor. So when he approaches you, that means his intelligence on the Louis Vuitton bag is much higher than yours if you're a new staff or, or maybe you work for one year. Right? So if you do not know your staff carefully, in terms of fashion, in terms of how the person is going to hold a bag or where the material is going to come from, and she's the one that's saying all these, to, all these things to you, that means you're a shitty salesperson. That means you don't understand the customer's thought process. Every customer that sees you today means he has interest in your services and products. The reason why he doesn't want to buy from you it's because your details are shit. And because you guys are millennials, a lot of them are millennials. Millennials are crazy people. If things doesn't sell, they blame the product. It's a product problem. It's not a product problem. Think about all the jobs that you had over the last five to 10 years that's related to sales or related to business. You really believe that you have all the details? Do you really believe that you have all the details? Think carefully this statement. Huh? The last few years, all the jobs that's related to business and sales, are you sure that you are 1 million percent sure of all the details in all the products and services. You know the answer better than me. You know the answer better than me. I can even, because I'm in HR practices, I can even tell you why Singapore does not want to hire Africans. I can tell you that. I mean, HR practices in UK, I can tell you why Central Asians have shit jobs in UK. I can tell you that. I mean, HR practices, I can tell you why Australians will not give you a permit to work there. I can tell you why many international countries in the world do not hire Putanis. Yeah, Jackson, I can tell you that. Why Indians and Filipinos are the most, most sought after workers in the world? I can tell you that. Why Japan welcome Vietnamese and Burmese workers, but they don't, they don't welcome the rest of the nations? I can tell you that. You see, 
when it comes to my industry, I have the most details. Why do you have the audacity to sell me something when your details are shittier than my details? Customers, they don't review everything. Okay, let me explain to one thing to everybody and I want everybody to pay attention now. The, the customers will not tell you whether he has money or no money. Please don't be stupid, right? Who has money? Put up a hand. See, nobody put up a hand, right? I repeat again. Who has money? Put up a hand. Correct. Everybody say, oh, no money, no money, right? I didn't look at your bank account. How the hell? Are, how the hell would I know you have no money? I wouldn't know, right? True. I wouldn't know. Don't listen to customers' negatives. Okay, when a customer don't want your product, it's because they don't like you. Because if the customers have no interest in your product, why the hell did they call you in the first place? You ask Jelisa, T. Toon, and uh, maybe Julie Jean, Sally, when they go to shops, you know, shopping, huh? to look at bags, and that means they want to buy something. Right? You don't go, if you hate bags, would you want to go to a bag shop? Oh, Julie Jean is crazy, man. She has this weird habit. She likes to go to places that she doesn't like. Because she's too bored. Oh, let's fuck some salespeople up today. Let's make fun. That means Julie Jean is so crazy. He go to shops to, 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 to tease the shopkeepers and then he walk out. <laughs> you see? I tricked the shopkeepers. In the end, I didn't buy shit from him. Come on, please. Everybody here, when you look at things, means you have interest. It's either whether the money is here or the money is later. You understand? Okay, when, when, when Henry go to a, 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 maybe a, a suit store, you know a suit store? He has interest. He has interest to buy a suit. It's only whether he can buy or he cannot buy, whether he has money or no money, that's all. Right? He would not, if he has no interest in suit, like I don't like to wear suits, okay? I wear suit maybe once a year. I hate suit. You'll never see me go window shopping for suit. Oh, doesn't matter. I really, really hate suits. You understand? But I will still buy it because I have to do it sometimes for some of the events. So you'll see me in suit once a year. That's it. Once a year. Once a year. And, and then the once a year is usually suit is compulsory. Even in business meetings, when I go, you can see 15 people wearing suit and tie. I will not be wearing suit and tie. You understand? All right, so, so you will not go and look for things if you are not interested. Just like everybody here, right? When you look for certain things, it means you have interest, right? You have. The interest is there. The interest is really, really there. It's either whether you have the money for it now or you have the money for it later. So the first thing you need to do is to manage your detailing with the customers. Like for example, you know, we have all these silly ass programs. <laughs> right? right? So, so you're going to throw me an education question. Like, is this diploma going to help me? Right? Yeah, a lot of you have this kind of funny, funny questions, right? Are you sure that this diploma is internationally recognized? Can this diploma in business and sales guarantee me a job? Right? You see? Agreed? Oh, sure. Uh, is this exam so div? You know, come on. That's the truth. You see, even at our products, but you have the interest. I know all of you have the interest because if you have no interest, you will not be here today. Why would you want to spend the a beautiful Saturday afternoon with me? if you have zero interest. So the interest is there. So when it comes to details, I am king 
of details when it comes to my service. So if you're going to ask me, oh, sir, is this diploma recognized or not? I mean, man, it's not for me. If I'm very close to you, I would say that I said, I'll tell you that University of Cambridge degrees are better than my diploma. They are. But can you go? Chongming, can you go to Cambridge? You can't. Okay? Henry, Oxford University is better than my diploma. Can you go? You can't. You can't get in. The entry requirement is too high. Harvard is better than our program, Sally. You know, Harvard University in America is better than our program. Are you eligible to apply for Harvard? No, you're not. That's why you are here today. There you go. Details. And then I'll, I'll talk to everybody. Come on. Why is Singapore education shit? Tell me. Why? Why? Because you never do your research. Singapore education is in the top 5% in the world. Is Bhutan, Mr. Sona? No. Sally, is it Philippines? No. Mr. Chong Ming, is it Vietnam? Is Vietnam in the top 5%? No. Then I ask another question. Now, how many of you want to spend five years to get a degree? Put up your hand. You did. Some of you did. What happened? Jobless happened. <laughs> right? Jobless happened. That happened. So now let me ask you another question. If you can get a diploma within eight months or 10 months, is it good or bad? Honestly. Honestly, good or bad? Correct. Detailing. You see, I give you guys a slap in the face. Pia, 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 pia. Everybody wake up today. Oh, some customers will ask me this question. But, you know, but I, I you know, they ask me this silly question. Oh, this diploma. I said, sir, 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 let, let, let's, let's, make it, let's make it real first, okay? You have nothing. You know what's nothing? N-O-T-H-I-N-G. Nothing. Nothing means if you don't have certificate, you can apply for what? Nothing. Okay, but I only talk like that to people that are very close to me. Of course, some of you are strangers. If I say it like that, you'll get upset, right? So, so nothing. You can apply nothing. How to spell nothing again? How to spell it? N-O-T-H-I-N-G. Nothing. Now, if you ask me, is my diploma good or bad? I'm going to tell you that it's shit. But nothing is shittier. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? Now, of course, if all of you can go to Cambridge University, I'm happy for you. Man, if, if, if Mr. User, because if Mr. User tells me I can go to Oxford University for education, Mr. User, you should go to Oxford. Stop hanging around with losers like me. <laughs> you should go. Right? Man, if you can go to MIT in America, one of the top universities in America, and then Miss, uh, Miss, uh, Miss, Mr. Alicia is going to ask me, should I go to MIT? I said, fucking go. Why do you want to hang out with me? But do you know why I can close everybody here? Because I know you need this diploma but you're playing hard to get. You see my level and your level? But why I'm convincing? Because I really know how education system works in the world. I really know. Seriously, if you ask me anything about Central Asia education, I can tell you. If you ask me about Philippine education, I can tell you. If you ask me about Indian education, 
I can tell you. If you ask me about African education, I can tell you. Maybe tell better than you. Let me share you a top secret where a lot of people here do not understand. Huh? Okay, let me share you a top secret. A top ministry of education mentioned to me this. He asked me this question. Why is it that, I asked him, why is it that, why is it so easy for so many people to go to universities today? Why during your generation, it was so difficult? You want to know what the real reason is? Let me tell you what the real reason is. The reason is to control social order. Social order means it makes people more civilized, fear of law, educated, and the, the lesser of dumber things, the brutality of how human species behave, get lesser. That's the reason why in today's world, we have so many, many universities. But that doesn't guarantee job. It makes Jelisa understand the laws of murdering people. It, mis it makes Mr. Zaneng not to do criminal shit and be fearful of the government. That is the reason why there are millions of universities around the world now. Because if all these universities are that great, all of you today will have terrific jobs. I know that. You see? I know that. And that's the reason why in your industry, your details must be terrific. That this is one thing I'm good at. I like to explore details because I'm into business development. So I'm going to show you this fountain pen. Uh, I, I, I'm into business development. Now. So this, this is a fountain pen. This fountain pen is made from China. Okay, there's a brand called, because I've poor eyesight, uh, I'm old man. <laughs> it's called Jing Hao. Jing Hao brand. Okay, true story, yeah. Okay, then I went to Bali, Indonesia, okay, and I bought a pen like this as well. Okay, this pen is pure silver. Do you know that silver is a very soft metal? Do you know? You don't, don't pretend that you know, Sonam, you have no fucking idea, okay? Don't pretend that you know, huh? right? You don't, right? So this silver, pure silver pen cost me $200 but it's pure silver, really pure silver, okay? This pen, if you buy a Mont Blanc, will cost you $3,000 because of one logo. This Jinghao pen is really, really good. It's a really outstanding uh, uh, fountain pen. I like to write with a fountain pen. Okay, the same pen with lesser quality in Mont Blanc will cost you $350 with lesser quality. I can be a good pen salesperson. Details. Details is how you encounter, encounter customers' negatives. So your details must be top of the top. So whatever industry you are in today, whatever, you have to consistently put information intelligence in your brains regarding your industry. You cannot bullshit. You must know. Because customers come from three forms. Most of you can close orders that are dumber than you. That means those customers are easygoing and dumber than you. You don't have a problem. Okay, and usually, I'm sorry to say, dumber people do not pay expensive things because there's a reason why they're dumb because they don't have good jobs and they're not doing well in life. So they cannot buy expensive things. Like Chong Ming, you know, your water dispenser is expensive. But why your sales have not hit the high level yet? Because you only can close easygoing person. So out of 10 customers you see today, one is easygoing. Nine are super bitchy. 
You know, recently I talked to one of my students from the Philippines, right? He said that the Filipinos like to bargain. Even the T-shirt is five bucks. They want it to be 250. And then if it's 250, they want it at one, one buck. And then if it's one dollar, they're asking you, how come it's not free? Why? Because you're not strong in your details. Okay, what is strong is details? I will tell you this thing. If, if today, Miss Michelle wants free t-shirt from me, and I'll ask her, if you want free t-shirt from me, can. I mean, if you donate $5,000, I will give you a free t-shirt in your name. Or can you name, name of any organization in the world that give free t-shirts? Or you, do you think we are a charity organization? These are details. Details. You have to be super, super detailed in order to handle people today. So we have the easy going. Easy going takes up about 30% of your business. The other 30%, smart people. Smart people are like me. We will not insult you. Okay? We will just say, thank you very much but I don't have money today and I'll walk away. <laughs> okay, smart people, usually they do not want to insult you. They will just walk away. Uh, no, they'll smile at you. No, thank you. This is how smart people react when it comes to buying stuff. Huh? They will not say anything. Huh? They will just say, oh, no, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's okay. Thank you so much. Smart people are like that. Okay? And then we have the dumbasses. Oh, the dumbasses. I'm sorry, man. A lot of us are dumbasses. We are 10 bucks, we want five bucks. Five bucks, we want 250. 250, we want one dollar. One dollar, how come it's not free? You know, uh, these are the dumbass people like us. We are like that. Okay. <laughs> I'm like that sometimes as well. You know, so the dumbass people to encounter dumbass people, your details must be strong. Must be strong. They want to buy. You see, de you see, despite all these dumbasses people, they all want something. You know, I always tell my education consultants, the students that we have today, they all want a diploma, right? True? Who doesn't want one? Everybody here wants a certificate. You know you do. Don't play hard to get. Oh, sir, but I... Oh, come on, nonsense. Everybody here wants a certificate. Okay, you know you want, but you know why? You're so dumb that you want me to beg you for love. <laughs> okay, really? Think carefully this statement now. I'm pretending that all of you are my customers now. Huh? Everyone here wants a certificate. So don't play hard, play hard to get with me, need Mr. Nirai Rai. Mr. Nirai, please do not say, oh, I don't need the certificate. If you're going to say something like that, means you're insulting my intelligence. If you don't need certificate, why are you here? Of course you do. Okay, Tashi wants a certificate, you do. Okay, don't play, don't bullshit my stuff. Okay, my stuff is stupid. So sometimes you can bullshit that. All right? Everybody here wants a certificate, okay? It's just that, you know, I need to tell you the details so that you understand what certificates is about. So what is a certificate today? A certificate is an application for job, nothing else. Without a certificate, you cannot apply for anything. So it's like, it's, yeah, if you ask me, is my college the best college in the world? It's not. Cambridge is. Oxford is. MIT is. NUS is. Tokyo University is. The, US, the University of Seoul is. But how many of you are qualified to go there? So if you're not qualified, why are you telling me about Cambridge stories? Aren't you cheating yourself? Aren't you wasting time? How many times could you have got a better job if you have a certificate earlier on? 
ask yourself this question. That's detail. Was I being a cunning little shit? I wasn't. I was being very, very honest. I'm being very, very honest. That's detail. Details you must know. So once you know the details, you can outwit, outsmart, outhandle the customers. When customers make fun of you, okay, let me explain to you what's the real reason. Do, come on, guys, do you have customers throwing sarcastic remarks at you? Do you have that? Like make fun of you, like, like, like bully you? Do you have that? Put up your hands. Come on, put a thumbs up. Be honest. Do you have like customers like making fun of you all the time? You, 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 yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, right? Okay, do you want to know the real reason, Miss Ting Tu? Let me tell you the real reason, uh, because the customers think that you're stupid. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. I know you don't like me to say something like that, but I can tell you one thing. When customers make fun of you, when customers is giving you shit, when customers is giving, they don't even want to listen to you. They, they don't even want to talk to you. It's because they think that you are dumber than that. That's the brutal honesty. I have two sales consultants here, Mr. Sonam and Mr. Jackson from Bhutan. I always tell both of them, why the fuck should customers listen to your both of your dumb asses? Wave to everybody now. So they know who the dumb asses are. There you go. The other guy, please wave your hand. Quick, hurry up, Sonam. Why are you so shy? There you go. They are my sales consultants. I ask them, it's not because Jackson and Sonam are bad people. They are very, very nice people. I'm telling the truth. They are very, very sweet and nice people. But customers don't like, he's not going to marry Sonam. Customers is gonna, not going to marry Jackson. Nobody cares. Do you think you care whether Sonam and Jackson is sweet and nice? Your customers are not going to marry you. Right, so Sonam and Jackson always use the sweet thing. You know the sweet thing? Oh, I am Mr. Sonam. I am the sweetest man in Bhutan. Everybody must like me. Everybody must love me. Nobody gives a shit, Sonam. Nobody. When customers talk rude to you, it's because in their heart, they, they think that you are stupid. Just like sometimes when you talk rude to salespeople, right? You do that. You do that. Why you do that? Because you think they're stupid. Like recently, I have a banker that called me from the Philippines because Citibank outsourced the telemarketing to Filipinos in the Philippines. So it's under Citibank. Man, that when the Filipino called me up, I got so irritated. I mean, I said, look, listen. I'm your customer. Why are you talking? Why are you talking? <laughs> You're a customer service, right? Then he kept quiet. I said, I've been a lawyer bank for, I, I am a supporter of Citibank for 20 years. What is wrong with you? I said, because he keep on selling me things which I don't want. You want to buy insurance? And you know, I'm sorry, I'm not being racist. You know, some Filipinos are, have the very thick accent, right? The very, very heavy accent when they speak English, which I cannot understand. So I got irritated. So that is the truth. When customers talk rubbish to you, talk rude to you, talk stupid to you, it's not because of the product. It's not because of the company. It's because they truly believe that you are stupid and you are unqualified to talk to them. That is the truth. Just like how I was being rude to the Citibank girl from the Philippines, because she doesn't stop talking. You know, telemarketing sales. You understand? Right? So now you understand what I'm saying, guys? Please believe me. When the customer talks rude to you, stop thinking it's a product problem. 
stop thinking it's a company problem. It's they don't like you. They really don't like you, right? Because they feel that you have nothing to offer them. So when when pe when 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 you know when people don't offer you anything, like look at you guys, how many of you would talk rubbish to me? How many of you? You think my staff will come and talk rubbish to me? My staff, when they see me, they get so nervous that they don't know what to tell me because they're worried that everything that comes out from their mouth will be something stupid. Ask the three of them here, yes or no? Put a thumbs up, three of you. Correct, there you go. So now you understand? So remember this. You can make the difference, not the customers. Customers, when they seek you for advice, a customer, he wants to buy something from you. They want. Just like some of you are still skeptical whether you should take this diploma or not. You know, skeptical, right? It's normal. You're so far, you're in Vietnam, I'm in Singapore, you know. So there's skepticism going on. So that is perfectly normal. So to handle customers, your details must be so fluent that customers trust you. So when you ask me, can I apply for a job in Vietnam? How to apply for a job in Vietnam? I can tell you how, because I'm in HR. You see? So your details must be strong. So that's number one. Number two, remember I mentioned the other word, emotions. Cust all customers have emotions. Okay? We cannot control our emotions. Example, if you ask the girls here, right? Every time the girls, they go and buy clothes, right? They are very emotional. Oh, I'm too fat. I cannot wear this dress. How come I look ugly in yellow? Why this? Why I wear this earring? I look stupid. Ask the girls here. All the girls will tell you. When they go shop, they love to go shopping for clothes, but they hate buying clothes, yet they want to buy clothes. Right, girls, put a thumbs up. Yes or no? Come on, all the female people, put a thumbs up. Yes or no? Yes, you know that. So it's like, it's a tragic event. They wear the pants. Oh, why my ass looks so big? Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. So consumers are emotional people because they want to spend money. You know, they, they work hard. You know, like a lot of you work hard and then when you spend 30 bucks, when you spend a thousand dollars, you are emotional. Okay, you are emotional. You worry that somebody will scam you. You worry that you might buy the wrong thing. You worry that you, you, you might purchase the, the, the wrong item or maybe your friends will laugh at you when you purchase this item. Is it a good buy, bad buy? You know, all the thoughts comes in. Maybe if I go to another shop, I can get another $5 cheaper. You know, like a lot of Filipinos love to do this. Huh? If I buy this thing at five bucks, hmm, maybe next store is selling at $3, right? So customers have emotion. So never, never get upset with customers' behavior. This is human behavior. Human. You understand? So if you are in sales and business, you cannot get upset with customers' behavior. Like some of the customers ask me the dumbest question when it comes to education. Really, oh, if I have time, I sit down with you and I review all the, all the truth to you. Oh my God, you, you, you'll laugh your ass off, really. You'll laugh your ass off. But I'm, I'm never angry at customers. Never, unless they personally insult me. If they are emotional, it's normal. So once your details is strong, you must learn how to manage emotions. Okay? 
manage emotions. Okay, how to manage emotions? Okay, of course, a lot of people will be in a different way. Like, I manage emotions in a different way. I'll say, hey, hey, stop, calm down. I think you misunderstood. This is how I usually speak. I think you misunderstood. I didn't force you to come here. You want to come here. I didn't put a gun on your head and say, hey, please come here. I didn't. So why are you so emotional? And then I start to educate them. Hey, you know, if, you're, if you are emotional, you like to overthink. And when you overthink, you don't think straight. So that's how I manage my customer's emotion. Just like yesterday, $65,000 is a lot of money. You know, the customer need to fork out. So the customer is emotional. I said, listen, listen. I said, listen, calm down. I told him. I, did, I mean, you don't have to pay me if you don't want to. But I can tell you one thing, regardless of what's happening in the world now, we, you still need to pay this in order to get your operation running. Managing customers' emotions is important. That's where, when people don't buy, after you do a very good presentation, am I right to say that sometimes when you do a very good presentation, a very, very, very outstanding presentation, and then the customers didn't buy, right? Yes or no? Right? It's because you thought you did well. No, you didn't. Your details are good but you never manage the customer's emotions. Like example, we talk about this program, okay, our, our domestic education program. Of course, there's interest. If there's no interest, none of you will be here. Some of you will quit. Some of you will quit. Why you will quit? Because you are lazy. Or maybe you have a hard work, you're tired, you come home, and you don't want to learn anything anymore. So when you manage emotions, it's about the facts. Okay. When you manage emotions, it's about how you tell the facts. Okay, so for example, let's say Jelisa wants to buy a t-shirt from me and he want a $5 discount on my t-shirt. I say, Miss Jelisa, please, Miss Jelisa, to find a t-shirt that is $5 cheaper than me, you have to spend two days to find it. These two days, you could have earned more than this $5. So why do you want to waste time? It's true, right? Uh, some of the things that, 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 that you buy, you, you just want a $5 discount, you spend three days searching for a $5 discount. That three days, you could have worked in McDonald's and earned 50 bucks and still buy the same T-shirt at a $5 higher point. Managing emotions is how you tell facts. To the customer how you tell facts to the customer not what the facts are how you're going to tell them how you're going to tell them like some people ask me this question is this diploma going to get me a job i said no no who told you that this diploma will help you to get a job not get you a job what will get you a job is your intelligence and your skill sets. But without a diploma or a certificate, you can't even get anything. And perhaps that's also one of the reasons why you didn't get nothing for the last few years. You see? managing emotions. I'm not there to insult him. I'm managing his emotions. Managing consumers' emotions is important because today's consumers overthink. They overthink. Uh, they like to over, overthink. 
They like to over worry. They like to this, they like to that, you know. So, so that's why managing customers' emotions is important. Right? Now you get it, guys. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is important to learn how to know the details and the emotions. Because think about it. Think about all the things that you want to buy the last five years. Why you didn't buy. I mean, you talk about you have money, huh? okay? If you have money, why you didn't buy? Because you are not been given enough details. You think that the salesperson is dumber than you and you don't trust the person that's selling you this item. Just because you're nice, like Sonam and Jackson are nice people and Akmala is a nice man, I'm not going to buy from you because I know your details are shit. It's not nice that people want to buy from. It's detail. You must know your details. And after that, go for the clothes, manage their emotions. Because look, look at all of you. Everybody here worried about many things every day, right? COVID, uh, Ukraine invasion, right? High expenses. The next five years, what's going to happen to you? Are you going to be a businessman? Are, are you going to progress in life? Are you going to have a better job? Are you going to get married? Can you buy a house? Can you have a children? Can you this? Is my father going to be sick? Is my mother going to be sick? You know, how can you not be emotional? Everybody's super emotional here. Okay. So you must learn how to manage people's emotions. And this is one thing I'm, I'm a genius at. When I deal with emotional people, I, I'm, I'm a genius at that. I just say, hey, hey, calm the fuck down. I say, why, why are you so emotional? Did somebody die today? You know, like some girls in my company, they cry. You know, they cry. I don't know, from stress. I say, why are you crying? I didn't molest you. Did I molest you? Did I touch your ass? I didn't do anything. Why? Because when you cry in my office, some of the other colleagues will think that I molest you, right? So can't you control your emotions? So once you control consumers' emotions, they can think clearly. They can think clearly. You see, remember I told you earlier on, if it's an inbound service, means they have interest in your products. They do. They do. If not, they won't call you. Right, and then after that, it's about your details. Whether you are, if you want, if you want to sell water filter, you better be an expert at water filter. If you if you want to sell designing services, you better be an expert at designing services. If you are a hairdresser or a fashion seller, you better be an expert in doing fashion and doing sell um so called you know whatever bakery you know cakes bread. You have to be an expert at it. So you can outwit, outmatch, outthink the consumers. And consumers, you know, consumers like assurance. They like assurance. Like one of the things that many people want to work for me, you know, a lot of people in the world want to work for me. Seriously, I know that. Some of you want to work for me. I know that. So don't play hard to get. Huh? <laughs> I know that. All right. It's because I can give assurance to people. People want assurance. So they want to work with somebody that have a lot of details and intelligence so they can trust this person. So that is very, very important. And then finally, it's about managing emotions. Okay, manage their emotions. Okay, now. So now you understand? Okay, so let's talk about Customers that don't have money. When you deal with customers that don't have money, which you will, but they still want to buy things from you, believe me. Okay, because they, they, they might not have the money now. They might have money in the future. Okay, this is one thing that I like to do is to create a purpose. Okay create a purpose. 
like for example, uh, let's imagine Mr. Angelito Velasco. Okay, let's imagine Mr. Angelito is a designer. He sell designing services for clients around the world, right? And she's from the Philippines. Okay, let's imagine that. That's a side business, right? So obviously, um, some people will want to look for his services, right? And then um, maybe some people will find that he's, you know, they don't have money now. He likes you, but he doesn't have the money now. Maybe you're too expensive. So you, you got to ask the customer, hey, is it because of the money? Is it because of the money? Let's, let's be honest. Is it because of the money? Okay, if it's the money, it's fine. I understand that because not everything is affordable for all sorts of people in the world. But you need to create a purpose in the front. A purpose allows people to follow you, to continue with you. Like some of you will get this diploma because the diploma is your purpose because you need this diploma to get better jobs. That's a purpose. Like maybe Joseph will learn Japanese. Why? Because he wants to work in Japan. Right? So, so all your jobs, all your positions, all your items, you must create a purpose for customers to come back. So if I sell a t-shirt to, to Gino, and then Gino say that, sir, I only have 10 bucks. I don't have $20. Okay, so how? I said, don't worry. We can still be friends, you know? Don't worry. When you have the money, you can come and see me. So I use the friendship, but you must be genuine. Uh. You must be really, really genuine. You cannot be fake uh, because people will know that you're fake. You see, so the purpose is to have a, have a good relationship with him so that he can come back for the T-shirt because he's going to buy the T-shirt anyway. It's not like he won't buy from someone else. Now you understand? Creating purpose for people to come back is important. Purpose. People work. People buy things for purpose. Like some of you bought the latest iPhone, you know, 14 Pro Max or whatever. Some of the girls do that. Why the girls buy this iPhone? Not because the iPhone functions are different. Fuck, man. iPhone 10, iPhone 12, iPhone 13, iPhone 15, iPhone 16. All the functions are similar. But why you buy an iPhone 14 Pro Max is because it has three cameras. As some of the girls want to take beautiful Instagram photos. You know, that's the purpose. That's why you're willing to spend an extra 500 bucks for it. But if you look at the iPhone 10 and the iPhone Pro Max, what is the difference? The I'm still, I, was, I have an iPhone Pro Max. I have, I have this, huh? okay? I don't use it. I still use my iPhone 10. Crazy, huh? I have a Pro Max, but I don't use it, but I use an iPhone 10. Why? Because the functions are the same. But why people buy the Pro Max is because of the camera. So there's a purpose. Just like some of you want to buy, spend money on a Louis Vuitton bag. Come on, a Louis Vuitton bag is the same bag that you can get from Thailand for $500 and the leather could be better than the Louis Vuitton bag because Thailand is famous for leather goods. Huh? Okay, a better leather quality in Thailand for $500. But because you want to look good, the purpose is called looking good with this Louis Vuitton bag. So all the girls here will carry the beautiful Louis Vuitton bag, right? And then you start walking around in the cafe, showing to people, and then you laugh at your friends. Ha, ha, ha. Who got the Louis Vuitton bag? You don't. But I do. <laughs> right? That's, what, that's how evil girls are. Girls are evil. Girls think like that, I swear. Yeah, they look so sweet and nice. No, they're evil people. So what they do is that they, they will, hey, you know, purpose. It's all purpose. When you want to sell something, when you want to do business with someone, you must create purpose. Purpose is important. Like for example, Chongming is selling all those water dispensers. 
Man, shit, man. Chongming water dispenser is expensive. I swear to God. It's expensive. So you got to somehow promote the purpose. What is the purpose? Purpose is health. You must sell health. You see, when we create this project, domestic education, you know what's the real reason? Why is our diploma so affordable? Have you ever wondered why? Have you ever wondered why? Hello? Rachel, have you ever wondered why? Why our stupid diploma is so cheap? It's cheap. Come on, don't, don't give me your shit. It's fucking cheap. I've been to Vietnam and Philippines. Okay? Philippine colleges are more expensive than me. I know that. I've been there. Okay? Don't lie to me. Okay? I know that. All right? What's the purpose? What's the purpose? Why am I doing this? Why am I selling my services so cheap? And you, how many certificates have you got so far? Man, you can start. You, do you know that when you study with me, you will get more certificates here than ever in the history of your life? <laughs> Strange, right? Right, and then we're gonna start the business club soon, somewhere in April. So more of you will learn about how to do business, and you don't pay me extra, right? What's the purpose, Mr. Chong Meng? What's the purpose? Correct. There's always a purpose. You think I'm so positive talking to you guys every day? Oh. <laughs> but the purpose is because I need data. If I can have 500,000 people on this platform. I can go public. That's the ultimate purpose. That's why we can put it affordable for you. And not only affordable, every month, did you realize that every month it gets better? We give more training, we give more classes, we give more this, we give more that. It's getting better. So that's our purpose. Customers are the same as you. We do things for a purpose. We get married because we don't want to be lonely. We get a PhD because we want a better job. You travel to Japan. It's because you hope that the Japanese people can pay you higher salary. Uh, Miss Jenny may dye her hair into red color because she wants to be prettier. <laughs> you understand? That's purpose. Yes. Why, why do you think Jenny dye her hair red? Oh, because to look uglier? <laughs> oh, I'm too pretty. I need to dye my hair red so I can be uglier. Come on. Everything we do has a purpose. Customers are all the same. You must create purpose for your customers. You see, the customer's behavior and that how we think things is the same as you. Why you don't want to buy things from certain people? You know, we all want to be Nice people, right? Right, true? Everybody here wants to be nice people. Oh, I'm sweet. I'm Jenny May. I'm the sweetest girl in the Philippines. Everybody wants to be like that. I get it, okay? That's Aya Aya Pang wants to be the sweetest girl in Myanmar. Of course, I know that. You know, you, you all want to be likable. But the real reason we don't want to buy from people is because we think that they are dumber than us. That's the truth. Don't lie to me. Okay? That is the truth. But because I want to be Jenny May, the sweetest girl in the Philippines, I must be politically friendly. Nonsense, Jenny. Absolutely nonsense. Because you think that guy is stupid. That's why you don't want to buy from him. A handphone card. Why? This shop is selling the same stupid handphone card from that shop. They're selling the same card. It's not like you go to the other handphone card. The handphone card can give you 300 minutes free. No, it's the same stupid handphone card. 
but because that guy that's selling the handphone card to you is a stupid idiot. But because you're nice and sweet, you don't want to say that he's stupid. That's the truth. Okay? Please do not tell me I'm wrong. All right? Don't tell me that I'm wrong. Okay? Don't, don't, don't be like Jenny like that, the sweetest girl in the Philippines. Stop that. Okay? That's the truth. Why, why people don't want to buy from Jackson and Sonam? And Akmala. Look at Akmala. Wave, wave to the everybody. Look at him. Why don't you want to buy from him? Let's be honest. Look at him. Let's be honest now. Why? You know the answer. But because we all want to be sweet and nice people. Okay? So that's important now. Uh. Okay, details. You have to be smart. You might not be good looking or presentable. It's fine because we are all born different ways, right? But you cannot be not details. Customers expect details. Even they are unreasonable. You must know more details than that. And then finally, you manage their emotions. You must learn how to manage their emotions. That is very, very important. Customers are crazy. You know, every time when I see you guys, you know, man, so sorry. Uh, I, I think all of you are crazy. Really, I do. Really, I do. If you attend my orientation, you know that I think that you're crazy. Really, I do. You are underachieving. You can do a lot of things better. You know, that's my belief. I always have expectations on humans. You know, one thing positive about me is that when I see people, I always have expectations on people. I always expect people to do better in life because that's our purpose. That's why we were born. We were born different from animals is because we can, we can do better. Animals cannot do better. A lion cannot do. A lion cannot comb his hair. <laughs> you can comb your hair. A lion cannot comb his hair. You can. So we can do better. So, so, Managing people's emotions is important. Like for example, if some of you are going to talk stupid in front of me, I'll just Pah! control your emotions. There you go. Then, then you're crying. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have this feeling, right? Right? When you're, you're crazy and then you scold your boyfriend, you scold your husband, you know, you behave like a lunatic. Right? Right? You do that, right? So I'll just Hey, calm the fuck down. Then you keep quiet. And then you start to cry. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I think I need to calm down. Right? Correct. And then lastly, create purpose. When you are in business, when you're in sales, you must have a purpose. Like if you sell t-shirt, what is the t-shirt purpose? What is the t-shirt purpose? Like here, I, I afford, you know, Hey, we're going to give more services soon to more people for such a cheap program. And it's cheap. Please don't say it's expensive. Huh? Okay? Don't say that because I know it's not. I do a lot of research on your education in your country. I know how much the costs are in your country. But then my purpose is if I have 50,000 people on this platform, I can give you better service with cheaper products. That's called a quantity business system. And how I can afford it? Because we are all through Zoom. Zoom don't require rental. Zoom don't require fixed, you know, fixed classroom. I don't need to buy a table and chair for Majula, Miss Majula. Oh, oh Miss Majula, you know, like some students are assholes, right? When they sit on the chair, oh, this chair is uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't have to buy a chair for her to sit in my classroom, you understand? So always create a purpose for your client base. Customers need to be lead. Okay, let me give you a tip of the day, the final topic of the day, and this is very important. Huh? Okay, customers need to be led. Now, how I wish I have more time with everybody, because if I have more time with everybody, I think you will be a genius after my classes. Customers need to be led. 
okay, they need to be lit. Because, you know, all of us have fears. All of us have worries, right? True? Agree? All of us have um, um, different feelings about how life is. But we have so much worries. How we wish there's someone in front of us that can lead us from the shithole that we are in. True? Think carefully this statement, huh? right? How I wish that someone, including me at my level, you know, every day when I, every time when I go to work, you know, I see my staff here, I want to vomit every time when I see their faces. <laughs> oh, why, Akmala? Why? When I see you, I have no hope. Even me at my level, you, you know, at my level, uh, you know, when I need to be led. I need love as well. Not only you, I need love as well, right? So, so when, I, when I go to work, when I, when, when, when I see my people, sometimes I, I feel demoralized. Oh, why am I? What, why, Sonam? Why? Why? Say, today's customers need leadership. So if you have strong details, if you can manage people's emotion, and, and if you can create purpose, they will follow your leadership. Like one of, like for example, beauticians, like some of you are maybe beautician. Right? I think Anna Trang is a beautician, right? You have the beautician uniform, right? Okay. I think you are beautician, right? So same thing, when people go to beauty salon, the first thing they'll think that it's expensive. Oh, this is a scam. But you know, girls like to be beautiful. So they will still go. They will still go. You understand? They will still go. Okay. Okay. So same thing. You must be an expert in beauty. You must be an expert in nutrition. You explain to them, okay, not only you, you use my makeup, I will recommend you what are the food you need to eat so that your skins get better. Although the, the, the food recommendation has nothing to do with your main job, but because you want to be a profession in your industry. You give extra services so that you look intelligent, you are intelligent to gain the trust of the customers. And then, of course, manage your emotions because when they see the beauty bill, one thousand dollar. <laughs> oh. And then you see Jalisa will have to face the, the stupid look. Yeah, one thousand dollar. So she become emotional. <laughs> she become emotional, right? Right. So Miss Trang would tell Miss Trang say, hey, "Come on, Jalisa, don't worry, man." Don't worry. I promise you, you will have the best service here. I promise you, I will do my best to give you the best beauty services. I, I will help you, you know, like teach you what to eat so that your skins get better. You know, that's called managing people's emotion. And then create a purpose. Hey man, if you are beautiful today, eh, we live in a very superficial world, which we do live in a very superficial world, right? It's easier to, for you to get a job. And you can find a rich husband. So do you think it's a good investment to make your skin better when you can find a rich husband and get a good job? <laughs> and, and if you marry a rich husband, you don't have to work anymore. Why is that a bad investment? That's called creating a purpose. So when you put these three positions in the, in the, in the follow thing, you have to lead your customers. You have to lead the people. Leading customers is important. And not every single time is about sales. It's not about money. When you deal with customers, it's about relationship. Okay. Although money is important to make a business run, because it cannot be free all the time, right? Man, if it's free all the time, you have to convince my three staff here, Sonam, Jackson, and Akmala, not to take salary for the next six months. Then I'll give you full free. Understand? So so that's what I'm trying to tell you. I repeat again, the four key points. First key point, details. 
you must be an expert in your industry. Okay? Whether you're a bartender or a clubber or tea seller, like recently, I, 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 recently I bought a box of tea from a Pakistani in Singapore. This is a true story. Huh? And, and, and usually I don't drink tea. I fucking hate tea. I think tea is for women. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a coffee guy. This is a true story. I'm just, I'm just telling you the truth. Huh? I'm a coffee guy. Huh? I, in my philosophy, I think that tea is for women. Coffee is for men. Tea is for women. Dogs is for men. Cat is for women. I'm old school. Old school. Huh? So this Pakistani guy, I think he's a great salesperson. He's an expert in tea. Man, the guy educate me. And then he let me taste apple tea. I didn't know that's apple tea because he's an expert in tea, right? Then he said, hey, why don't you just, because he's so confident in his product because he knows my taste really well. He, when he sees me, he knows what kind of person I am, right? So why don't you try this apple tea? It's really, really nice. Don't worry, just try it. It's free. And I try it and I like it and I bought from him. So how the hell did someone like him convince me, a non-tea drinker, to become a tea drinker? Be a professional in your industry. And then he managed my emotions because he know that maybe I feel a bit womanly when I drink tea, you know. So he, he put some thoughts in my head. Man, you can treat the apple tea like a dessert. You know, try to calm my emotions down because I worry that people look at my staff will look at me. Oh, boss is drinking tea. He, he's a female boss. Yeah. <laughs> right? So he calmed me down, you know, and he managed my emotions. And that tea is not cheap, ma, I swear. There's only 10 packets and it cost me 10 USD per box. Okay? And I bought three boxes. So he managed my emotions. He managed my detailing. And, and not only that, once in a while, he will message me as a friend. Not to close orders, uh, as a friend. Say, how are you doing, man? You know, something like that. And of course, I'm a busy man sometimes. I will delay that message. But I, 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 I do talk to him once in a while, you know. So, so he's leading me. So now, if I ever want to buy tea, I will buy from him. And that guy is a very ugly man. <laughs> okay? It's not like it's a, it's a pretty girl in a miniskirt. No, 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 no. He's an ugly man. Very fat and very ugly. You see? So that's what I'm trying to tell everybody here today. All right, guys, do you understand so far? Please put a thumbs up. Okay, do you get it? All right, great. So question time. Okay, we have about 15 minutes. So as usual, uh, if you have any questions about the customers, remember, all customers are the same. It doesn't matter. Every customer are like you. You don't buy things from people that are dumber than you unless it's super, super cheap. Okay? Okay, and number two, you are emotional every single time when you buy something. You worry too much. And number three, all customers need to be led. And uh, create a purpose. Sorry, create a purpose first, and then they will follow your leadership. Okay? Next question time. Anybody got questions? Please ask. We have about 15 minutes. Please type your questions on the chat box. Don't be shy. Huh? Don't be shy. Okay. Good, good lessons. Blessing. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. No question today? Hmm. Usually I'll have hundreds of questions. Yeah. Anybody got questions? Don't be shy. Nice session. Thank you. How to deal with angry customers? Man, why, why you don't have to deal with them? They are crazy people. What the fuck are you? <laughs> Man, 
angry customers are crazy people. Why why you get angry with them? You see, the problem with you guys is that you are very, very personal with customers. You see, like some of my consultants have this problem. Like some of the consultants are, are very, very uh, obnoxious, arrogant, ignorant. So some of my consultants will get upset. Oh, look at this Filipino. Look how stupid he is. You know, like they'll talk, talk, talk shit about the customers, you know. Oh, look at this Sri Lankan. Oh, you know, you know. I always tell, I always tell the people, come on, don't be stupid. You are the stupid one, I told them. You know why you're stupid? Because you cannot manage them. So when you cannot manage angry customers, you are blaming the customer. And the, the thing is, why customers, why you feel upset with customers? It's because you think that they are angry at you. They are not. They are just dumb. You know, why you get angry with dumb people? Like a cow. You know, Jelisa, do you have a cow in the Philippines? Is there cows in the Philippines? There is, right? So you saw a big cow, a big cow, you know, standing in front of your house, right? Will you get angry with the cow? Hey, cow, what the fuck? Why are you in my way? Will you say something like that? Hey, cow, are you that stupid? Why are you stepping in front of me? Yeah. Angry customers are like cows. Okay? If you take it personal, when you get angry with cows, uh, now you understand? There's nothing to deal with. Okay, if you can, if you, and usually customers are angry, it's because you are a shit presenter. And the angry customers will feel that you're wasting his time. Think from the customer's point of view. Don't think from your point of view. Details, manage your emotions. Man, I deal with a lot of angry customers, man. Seriously, I do. And, and then they're so happy with me. I remember there's one time, one time a big boss from Jurong Island came to our office. They were complaining about two of my staff, Pradeep and, and Pradeep and uh, what's his name? Uh, Stanley. Okay. And then they said that my staff have bad attitude. So 10 of their management people walk into my office. I remember that. They were very angry at my, my people. Then I, I, you know, but because I can manage their emotions, right? I said, listen, listen, I do understand how you feel. I told them, I really do understand how you feel. Who wouldn't be angry? But please understand this. Your whole team is managing 80 Indians. These two guys is managing 1,000 Indians. And when your team cannot manage these 80 Indians, maybe it's your team's problem. I told them. Because when you are calm, they are calm. When you're angry, they are angry. And not only did these bosses were happy with us, they continue to be loyal customers until today. Okay? Because I wasn't personal with them. And they know that because anger recites anger. Like just like Jalisa, I believe you have a boyfriend, right? So, so when you quarrel with your boyfriend, your boyfriend get angry, you get angry, we get angry, pa, 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 pa. then angry of what? Angry because your boyfriend forgot to flush the toilet. That's it. Ta-da, stupid. <laughs> Anger comes from both parties. You understand? So that's important. Ah, okay, next question. Never make it personal. Never make it personal. That is so important. Never make it personal, okay? How to motivate customers' emotions? Okay. To motivate customers' emotions, first, you must be strong in details. That means whatever services you have, you have to be an expert in your service. Because if you're not an expert in your services, you cannot think of any services within your industry to help him. Okay? So, so usually, if you cannot motivate customers, it's because you are not an expert in your industry. Like I can motivate people in my business easily because, come on, this is one of the most affordable education system in the world. 
Really, Chong Ming, you can find something cheaper than me in Vietnam? I don't fucking believe that. Yeah, from shit school, yes. There you go. You see? Because I'm so detailed. I know how Vietnam works. I know Ho Chi Minh. I know Da Nang. I know Hanoi. So that's a motivation. There you go. Right? That's a motivation. That's it. Okay, some of you will ask me, oh, uh, 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 why do I need to start this program? Because you must learn how to do business. Because one day, you will get retrenched. You will. So you got to start a side business first to make sure that you don't get retrenched. See? Detail. Because that's life. I know life. I know how your life is in the Philippines. I know how your life is in Kyrgyzstan. I know how your life is in Africa because I've been to all these countries. Details. To motivate people, you must know things that do not. Then they will listen to you. If, you, if, if they know more than you, how are you going to motivate them? Can, can imagine if, if you go back to Jenny May. Where's Jenny May? Jenny May has an orange hair, right? So if I want to dye my hair orange, okay? Jenny hair is very, very orange, right? I'm, my hair is black. And I'm going to teach Jenny May how to dye orange hair. She's not going to listen to me where her hair is more orange than my, than my hair. I'm the dumbest guy. It's like me asking, like some of you have babies, right? Jean, Jean, Julie Jean, maybe you have a baby, right? Can you imagine if I, I, I cannot give birth and I go ask Julie Jean, hey, Julie Jean, you shouldn't give birth to baby like that. Man, Julie Jean will slap me in the face. The reason why you cannot motivate your customers is because your details in your industry is not fully completed. So you offer them nothing that they already know. Like Chong Ming is one a good idea of what a dumbass is. So when you sell your water dispensers, everybody is selling water dispensers in Vietnam. Everyone is. Why is your water special? Why the fuck should I buy water from you? Where I can buy from 3,000 shops in Vietnam. Uh, then Chong Ming will look at me. But the, this is called the dumb ass look. <laughs> You know the dumbass look, right? So how are you going to motivate me when you, you know nothing, when I know more? Correct. So of course you can tell me, oh, Alcon is this, you know, this, this. If you compare that price, I take a calculator for you, you know, look at this price. Let me show you the prices. Pep, 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 pep. Look at that, look at the difference. And then not only that, we have free delivery, you know, you, you know, something like that. Because you know your stuff, you know your competition, you know everything. That's how you motivate customers, okay? Um, how to get real purpose, sir, or show? Ah, this is a very, this is for life, right? Now, real purpose, real purpose is a bit different. Real purpose is a bit tricky because I, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> None of you will know. So, it's hard to get real purpose. It's really, really hard to get real purpose. Usually, I will tell people, don't get real purpose. Get a goal. Okay, what do I mean by get a goal? So maybe your goal is to make a lot of money. Okay, your goal, huh? a lot of money. So when you have a goal like this, a lot of money, there's many options for you to follow to get that goal. You can sell toilets to make a lot of money. You can sell fashion to make a lot of money. You can sell hairdressing to make a lot of money. So that's a goal. Purpose is difficult to do because we change every year. Maybe your purpose this year is to get married. And after you get married, oh shit, my husband is a dumbass. I don't want to get married anymore. <laughs> so your purpose change. You see, your purpose change. So I cannot tell you what purpose is, but I can tell you one thing. Everyone here must do something. Okay? 
you must do something. You cannot sit at home and do nothing. Okay, that is so important. To create purpose is you have to do something. Because when you do things, you will figure things out. When you stay at home, you're just thinking, 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 and nothing comes out. And how do you know that your purpose is the correct one? Until you try. So purpose is like it's like luck. I'll be honest with you. Many humans in this world cannot find purpose. It's not just you. Many. When you do less, you cannot see purpose because you do not know which is the right destination. Thinking is important. Overthinking is terrible. When you do things, you try, you fail. Huh, okay, I understand now. You try, hey, it works. And then you try again, hey, it works. And it works, it works, it works. That slowly, slowly, you will build purpose. Okay? Um, can we maintain a friendship with customer? Ah, oh, man. Okay, listen, this is a very sensitive topic. Now, this is just from my point of view. I might be wrong. Okay, like me, I have no malice towards people. Okay? I can maintain friendship with anyone, whether you're from Africa, as long as I have time, as long as I have time. Because one of the biggest problems is timing. I don't have time. But as long as I have time, I can make friends with people from Central Asia, Vietnam, Philippines, India. Even you are the ugliest person on this earth or the prettiest person on this earth, I can maintain relationship because I have strong discipline. Now, if you are a pretty girl, okay, please understand now, if you are a handsome guy or a pretty girl, if you maintain friendship with people, it might cause a different ideas from some customers. Okay, this is very, very important. Okay, so just like me, if I talk to all the pretty girls all the time, how do you think my sales consultant would think about me? Now you understand what I'm saying? So friendship thing is a bit sensitive, okay? It really depends on your own discipline. Like, again, those people that have better looks, like Miss Jenny May, you know, your orange hair is very bright, you know, maybe you'll catch the wrong attention. If you maintain the wrong management, wrong maintenance with, with, with friendships. So, so, so that's what I'm trying to tell you. There is no right or wrong formula for this. You have to gauge with your, with your own experience, okay? All right, next question. Uh, okay. Uh, um, so how to do if customers need more time to think and I need to discuss with my wife and husband? When a customer say like that, it's because they think that you're stupid, Chong Meng. That's why they not need to talk to their husband. If you're smarter than his husband, he will convince his husband to buy. Okay? Remember, don't look at the end. Look at the front. Did I did a fantastic, super detailed, highly charged, exciting presentation? Because sometimes when customers have this reaction, it's because your presentation is shit. Do you understand? So when, just like you guys, right, when you don't want to buy anything from someone, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? You will say that, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I need more time to think. So don't focus at the end. Focus on your journey during the presentation. Work on that. Don't work on here. There's no miracles here. There's no miracles here. Work on here. You know, just like, again, let's make fun of Jenny May again. You know, when, when Jenny May dye her hair orange color, maybe, you, you know, you want to have not some rich boyfriends, you know, maybe I wouldn't know. Huh? <laughs> so the journey is, all right, he'll put orange color hair first, and then he'll put eyelashes, you know, and then he'll put lipstick. And then he'll put some makeup thing on the face. So that's the journey. You understand? That's the journey, right? You understand? That's the journey. 
So the same thing is the journey. You have to focus on the journey. Don't focus on the end product. Because the end product, the end result depends on your journey. So if you did a solid presentation in the front, customers will not think like that. Most likely, if a customer says something like that, it's because you were shit in the front. You understand? Because customer's reaction depends on your journey. You understand? So don't focus at the end. Focus at the front. Okay? What is your thought about customer is always right? That's absolutely wrong, Rachel. Shit, man. There are so many stupid customers. That's not right. <laughs> customer is, is not always right. Okay? Very, very important. Huh? Customer is not always right. Okay? That's a lie. That's a lie. Huh? What to do when customers not liking buy seller items? Uh, again, I cannot tell you how to control the customer because there's a lot of reasons why customers will not like your items. Maybe your item is shit. Your quality is shit. So I cannot, this question is too general. I cannot give you a definite answer, but there's a lot of factors behind that. It could be the culture, it could be the product, it could be your service, it could be the logistics, it could be the pricing, it could be the quality. So this is too many variation, okay? How can I find our customer's purpose? Talk to them. Hey, what do you want? That's it. Come down, sit down, please. This is what I always do. I say, sir, sit down, sit down. Come on, sit down. Sit down. What do you want? Seriously, what do you want? Seriously, what do you want? That's how I find customer's purpose. Talk to them. Talk to them. He says, sir, be honest. What do you want? If the things I can do, I will do. If things I cannot do, I cannot do. Tell me what you want. To find the purpose of a customer, it's just talk to them. That's it. Don't predict them, all right? Like you look at, you look at Atmala, you know, I look at Atmala again. Man, he looked like a terrorist, right? But he's not. He's one of the sweetest guys in India. So if we don't talk to him, we wouldn't know. So the final purpose is just talk to them. Ask him, what do you want? Seriously, what do you want? All right, good. Okay, next question. I can feel that I'm running the biggest company in the world. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I got a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes I do sales from Facebook. My message read, you message, but they don't reply. How to do that in their cases? Okay, now, this is a trick that I always use. Huh? Never, never review everything. Chong Ming, 100%. You, 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 you just pull your pants down and give everybody thing, right? Right, that's a star. I can see that. Ah, huh? hundred percent. You pull your pants down. Right, oh, here, take it, take it, take me, take me, take me. That's what you will do, right? Okay. Now, that's a trick in terms of presentation, is that you cannot review everything during the first time. You can't. The girls will know. All the girls here will know. Ah, huh? like like girls like Jenny, Julie, Nurila, Sally. You know, there are guys that will like you, right? Right, Julie, remember when you were young in high school? Julie, can you remember, Julie? You can remember, right? When you were young, you were high school, you see some guys liking you, right? Did you offer yourself immediately, Julie? Did you offer? You say, oh, take me! Take me! <laughs> Would you do that, Julie? Remember when the guys like you when you were in high school? Did you, oh, oh, you like me? Really? Take me! Take me now! Take me, please. That's one of the biggest problems in sales. You, you act like you are, you are desperate, you know. Take me. Julie, take me. You know, right? You wouldn't do that, right? So the girls are very smart. They will play hard to get, right? They come with tactics, you know. Same Chong Ming. Understand? You understand? Can you imagine if you like a girl and then you go up to the girl and say, hey, take me. I'm Chong Ming. Take me. Man, Julie Jean will run away from you. He will get the police to come and arrest you. There's one crazy guy shouting, 
take me every single day. <laughs> you will get the police to come down and arrest you. Presentation. Never review everything on message and emails. Even your customers are asking for more, don't. Only review when you see face to face. Okay, example. When you come for this program, did I review, did we review a lot of things with you? Did we do that? No, we didn't. We tell to go for the orientation first, right? I say, so Julie Jean will say, oh, yeah, but what happened to my staff? Say, hey, don't worry, just go for the orientation. And then Chong Ming will say, well, yeah, 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 yeah. hey, don't worry, just go for the orientation first. It's free, why are you worried? Nobody's going to scam you, you're not paying shit yet. So the key on message, the objective of emails and message is to arrange a face-to-face -face conversation. When you message someone and when you email someone, your objective is not to close the order. You understand? It's like girls, like guys picking up girls. Guys are so stupid. They thought that all the girls will fall in love with them within the first five minutes. They have this stupid mentality, the take me mentality, right, Sally? Right? Take me, Sally! Take me! Take me! Take me, please! Sally will run away. And she will get police to arrest me. You understand? So it's the same. It's the same. <laughs> <laughs> message and emails <laughs> you ask Jelisa Sondam approach you take me take me <laughs> she, she will run away <laughs> she will take the chair and smash you on the head you understand oh god so remember, message and emails are not for closing deals. Message and emails are for fixing appointments. <laughs> okay, don't be lazy, Chong Ming. I know what the fuck you're trying to do. You're trying to close a deal through message. Don't fucking bullshit me. I know that's you. You're young and stupid. That's what you're doing now. You want to close the deal through a message. You want people to pay 600 USD through a message? Man, you are fucking arrogant. You know that? You are fucking arrogant. You understand? You're crazy. Message and emails are not for closing deals. Message and emails is for fixing appointments to see face to face. Understand? So don't review everything. Once you review everything, it's gone. So can you imagine I'm in love with Sally, right? So I expect that Sally will give me a challenge into dating her. Then all of a sudden, Sally, when I first met Sally, Sally said, take me, take me, take me. I'll run away first. Understand? It's the same. If, I, if I'm secretly in love with Sally and I like her and I want to date her, of course, Normal people will receive resistance. The girls usually will have resistance. But, but all of a sudden, when I approach her, she has a take me mentality. Take me, Benson, take me. Oh my God, I'll run away immediately. You understand? Oh shit, that Sally is crazy. I think I like the wrong girl. Now you understand what I'm saying? Understand? So, so emails and message is building chemistry, is building tempo so that you can see face to face and talk face to face either through zoom or through a physical appointment understand chong ming 100% you send fat flyers you send posters right right yeah that's what you did right you send all the posters you, you tell them made in, we are made in usa nobody cares chong ming okay so that's the problem with you you try to close a deal through a message so when you try to close a deal to a message, the customers don't want to hear you talk anymore. And, and it's very difficult to deal with customers through message. Huh? Very, very important. Huh? So that is so important. Okay. Next question. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir, for awesome session. My question is why many people buy 
buy on girls' TikTok and OnlyFans views instead of things that can improve themselves. Because all the girls know that. The girls know that these are the dumb customers. Remember I told you, smart customers. <laughs> smart customers. Uh, easygoing customers. Dumb customers. Men are dumb. Okay, Mr. Clyde? Men are dumb. Okay? They, they, they angle the customers to a lot of lonely men outside. <laughs> so that's the problem. So this is, that's the reason, okay? Remember the three categories are huh? smart, dumb, easy going. So a lot of dumb customers are like that, you know? Like if you're a dumb ass, you hope that you have a beautiful girlfriend, okay? Remember the last lesson that I had with you guys? If you're a dumb ass, you hope that you have beautiful girlfriends, but you forgot that beautiful girlfriends do not hang out with dumb asses. You understand? And those beautiful girls are smart enough to understand the dumb asses people who buy their product. Now you get it? Okay. How to manage in a business and environment where the people are not responsive regardless how friendly you are and know your details and emotions. Um, okay, this is important. Um, it's called culture. It's called a work culture. Now, I cannot tell you I can give you the right advice because this falls onto the CEO of the company or the boss of the company. If usually you're in a situation like that, just leave it. Don't waste your time trying to be friendly because it's not going to work because that's the work culture. It has nothing to do with the staff. It's actually how the culture is. Like you see, in my company, I use vulgar words a lot, you know, really a lot. Okay, the F-bombs is everywhere. You understand? Because that's our work culture. So people are expressive here. You know, people are motivated here because it has to be a hype situation. But some companies are a bit quiet. How are you going to motivate people where six where 70% of the people there are 50 years old and above? You're gonna watch TikTok videos with them. Some of them don't even have a smartphone. You understand? So so this has nothing to do with you. It's more towards the culture. So if the environment is like that, then don't waste your time. There's a term called do what the Romans do in Rome. All right? So that, that's, that's the advice I can give you. May we have the notes for today's classes? I am, you don't have to have the notes. There will be a video on our YouTube channel, which you can download from YouTube. And it's there. How do I convince the people with jealousy map matters? Uh, you can't. Okay, don't, don't try to... See, listen, 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 listen. Don't try to convince people. You see, what am I doing now? Am I trying to convince you now? Am I trying to convince you now? Chong Meng, please listen to me, Chong Meng. Am I doing that? No, I'm not. Jelisa, please listen to me, man. I'm not. Okay, don't try... The more you try to convince people, the worse effect it will have. As long as your details are strong, people will be convinced by you. Like people are convinced by me because my details are extraordinary level. Because all of you think that I make sense, right? I make sense. So there you go. So I don't have to convince you. So remember, don't look at the end. Look at the front. Did you do a fantastic job during your presentation. That is more important, okay? How to maintain the good sales? Consistency. Sales is a lifestyle. Sales is not a project. Some people thought that business and sales are project. I need how to close how many deals per month. You see, no. Sales is a lifestyle. Like if you going to sell tea. You're going to promote tea because you love tea. That's your lifestyle. So you talk to 1,000 people about tea every single day. So 1,000 people multiplied by 31 days, that's 31,000 people that you have spoke to about tea. And out of these 31,000 people, if you did a very good presentation with very good detailing and managing expectation, Pia, 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 pia. 
you will have good sales. Remember, sales and business are not project. There is no deadline. There is no end game. It's a lifestyle. Okay? Sometimes we sold in loss because of competition. Will this benefit the customers if the good sellers? Never, never sell your items in losses. If you want to sell your item in losses, you can. Make sure there's an end game. Like, like for example, why we give free training? Free training is losses. Right? Isn't it losses? Man, if you, if you go for one month free training, you can get up to six certificates. That's fucking losses. <laughs> right? There must be an end product. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? If I sell for losses, is it worth it? So by using this system, I am providing affordable education. I am providing affordable training. Millions of people in this world needs affordable education and affordable training. That's my end game. So you want to sell losses? You can. Make sure there's an end game. That means if I sell this, this to attract people in, like if you sell, I don't know, if you sell books, okay, if you sell books, and then maybe the first book is half the price, but the purpose of this book is to create a membership system so that people can continue to come to your shop to buy new books. Of course, there will be some people that have no money after the half price. Like just like some of you maybe will quit after the first month because of financial issues, but I'm not going to be prejudiced towards you. You understand? I will still give my free training. And every time when I do this free training, I will give my heart and soul for this free training. You understand? Uh, most time it happens, I buy expensive and search. Yeah, correct. You, you have to have an end product. Use a gimmick. Sell cheap, but you want to have things behind. You understand? So you have to create a system. You understand? Sell cheap. You sell cheap to attract people in. Like only fans, like just now somebody talk about only fans, right? Some of the girls, what they do, they dress half naked. Half naked is free. Full naked costs a lot of money, right? So they dance in their skimpy dresses on TikTok just to attract people into this. Are they being, are they being what do you call it, abused? Yes, they are, right? But then the end product is the only fans video. So it's the same. You have to, if you really want to offer cheap stuff, you can. But the cheap stuff, must create a bigger purpose, then it's good, okay? Apart from offering product courtesies and group for details, what other skill rep to, ex to, to uh, you mean other skills to have customers retention? Okay, Mr. Prince, honesty. Honesty is important. If you sell an expensive product, you must be honest with the client why it's expensive. Customers today are very, very smart. They're not dumb anymore. You understand? It's not like your grandfather, grandfather's generation. They cannot do research. They all know. So the key to sell honesty is the skill that you need to have. Because honesty will make customers trust you. Like, I think I'm a good, honest salesperson. I am. I will not oversell. I will not overpromise. I, my details are strong. My managing of emotion skills are strong. So to me, honesty skill, the ability to sell honesty is important. Okay? Thank you. Keep safe. Thank you. Thank you. If we have a real friendship with customers, will the customers take advantage of you? The answer is yes, unfortunately. So. So you need to compare because you are not me. Okay, Ronan, Roman, Roman, you're not me. Okay. It's, it's, if, if I let you take advantage of me, it's because I let you, not because you're smart. Because I close one eye. You see, that's me. Okay. So you got to ask yourself what kind of person you are. If you're not smart and all the customers are taking advantage of you, then you better stop this friendship shit. You got to stop it. Okay, so, so it depends on individual personality. I have a lot of friends. 
that will not take advantage of me. Do you understand? So it still, it still depends on, on your personality. Yeah? Okay. If you have a business, is it better to self-manage or hire a worker to manage? Because self-manage most of the time only stay for the business. Well, Miss Angie, it depends on you, like how big you want your business to be. If your business is small, self-manage it. Okay, you have to self-manage it. Don't daydream. No one will work for you. So don't bother going to hire people. I remember Miss Rowana, you know, she has a small business. Uh, Miss Rowana is doing the right thing. She's doing it herself because it's a small business. Right? You, she has no intention to convert the business to a multinational corporation. She has no intention to get Google to invest in her, you see? So she keeps it small and she's making money, you know? It's not like she's not making money, she's making money. So, so the key thing is, it, it still depends on your business direction. If you, tend, if you think to expand, if you think to really, really make it big, of course, you need to hire people. Like my company, I need to hire people because we have a lot of businesses and I have hundreds of staff. You know, I don't have a choice. You understand? Now? But if I do a small business, I will not want to hire people. What's the point? I don't understand. All right, next question. So, so, so yes, so indeed. So As a female in work can be a problem. Being friendly can cause some misunderstanding. Yeah, it's true. There's a lot of crazy men in this world. I'm sorry, that's how men are today. I apologize on the behalf of all men today. <laughs> so to the woman, I apologize on, all, on behalf of all men today. We are that stupid. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay. I understand why Chinese, especially mainland Chinese, is good in sales talk even they can't speak English because they can convince customers even they are dumb asses. Yes, Marjorie. China people, when you come to business and sales, oh my God, they are the best. They are even better than me because their details are so strong, so strong. And they don't care about people's emotions. They manage people's emotions well. How to get the customer? Talk to people. There is no perfect way. Put a lot of Facebook advertisements, do whatever it takes. Put leaflets, talk to people. It's, sales is a lifestyle. Put TikTok advertisement. TikTok advertisement is free, right? Put Instagram, Facebook, whatever. You know, there are one million ways to get customers. Um, good. If what's the weather like today? You mean in Singapore? I think it's going to rain, man. Yeah, it's going to rain soon. Okay, guys, I think I have to stop the questions now because there are too many of you and it's 7.30 now. I have an appointment at 8 p.m. today. I have a business appointment at 8 p.m. today. I'm going to rush for a business appointment at 8 p.m. today. So again, guys, um, I hope that my insights can help you today and I hope you guys have a good session today. And um, we are trying to create more things, okay? Um, just let you know, okay, in a few months' time, we want to create an online university thing. Okay, what's an online university? An online university means like, if you want to talk to me, there will be a hotline. There will be this. There will be this. You know, it's like in the clouds, so we can talk to each other even more in the future. So yeah, so that's the, that's some of the things that we want to do. Okay, and guys, again, um, thank you for showing up today. Okay, I hope you guys have a good lesson. All right, and um. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys will do well, okay? If I happen to see you in the future, I'll see you in the future. If I don't, and perhaps today is the last time, I sincerely wish you the very best. I hope you guys go have a good life, you know? Maybe some of you will find a rich husband and get married, you know, and you don't have to work anymore. But if not that, then I, I wish you the very best, and I hope to see you guys in the future, all right? Okay? And please follow our Instagram and Facebook. If you like us, put some positive comments. If you hate us, please... Stay away from us. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.